In this video, I'm going to look at some applications of the fundamental equations, i.e. the laws of conservation of mass, energy and momentum. First, we will look at the force on a sluice gate. Suppose we have water in a horizontal channel flowing under a sluice gate. And we want to know what force is exerted on the gate by the water when it flows underneath it. First, we choose a control volume, which I will form by taking two cross sections some distance upstream and downstream of the gate, denoted here as cross sections 1 and 2. We're going to apply the momentum equation to this control volume, and we need only consider the horizontal direction, which as usual I'll denote as x. The momentum equation tells us that the momentum entering the control volume through cross section 1 plus the sum of all the forces acting on the control volume of water equals the momentum leaving the control volume across section 2. So, we have the momentum entering and leaving, rho q u1 and rho q u2, but what are the forces acting on the water? Well, there's a pressure force at cross section 1, which is the force due to the pressure of the water upstream of the control volume, which I've denoted F1, and a pressure force at cross section 2, which is the force due to the pressure of the water downstream of the control volume, denoted F2. And finally, there's the force exerted by the gate on the water, which is here denoted Fg. We should note here the direction of Fg. This is a reaction force which is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force that the water exerts on the gate. It's this reaction force we need in the momentum equation, since this is the force acting on the control volume. Thus, the momentum equation in the x direction is rho q u1 plus f1 minus fg minus f2 equals rho q u2. Forces f1 and f2 are hydrostatic thrusts at cross sections 1 and 2 respectively, and we know from hydrostatics that they have the form a half rho g bh1 squared and a half rho g bh2 squared respectively. The force Fg is unknown and is in this case what we're trying to find. Thus we have this equation. Rearranging this we get an expression for the force of the gate on the water which acts in the negative x direction. The force of the water on the gate would of course be equal and opposite to the force of the gate on the water, i.e. in the positive x direction. For our second example, we'll look at the flow through a sudden expansion in a pipe. Flows of this type experience separation from the boundary and that extends some distance downstream. In this region of separation, turbulent eddies form, which cause energy losses. Let's assume that we know the discharge and cross-section of areas up and downstream of the expansion. I'll assume that we know the discharge and areas at two cross-sections denoted 1 and 2 as shown here. I can use cross-sections 1 and 2 and the sides of the pipe to define a control volume. I'm going to apply the fundamental equations to find the energy losses. First, I apply conservation of mass, or continuity, which yields the velocities up and downstream. Next, I apply the Bernoulli equation, which describes conservation of energy per unit weight, and takes the form shown here. Rearranging this gives an equation for the losses in terms of head losses. Since the flow is horizontal, we know that the potential head loss is zero, i.e. that z1 equals z2. Thus, the equation simplifies to the sum of the piezometric head loss and the velocity head loss only. Finally, in order to find the piezometric head loss, we apply the law of conservation of momentum, which, as before, states that the momentum entering the control volume plus the sum of the forces acting on the fluid in the control volume equals the momentum leaving the control volume. Again, I've taken x to be the horizontal direction 
and consider only the momentum equation in the x direction. In this case, the only forces are pressure forces, of which there are three in the x direction as shown here. Substituting these into the momentum equation gives this equation. The P1A1 terms cancel out, and taking the ρq u1 term over to the right hand side, we have this equation. Note that we can use continuity again here, since we know that q equals u2a2. Thus division by A2 yields an expression for the difference in pressure across the control volume. Going back to the equation for the losses again, we can substitute the pressure difference term we've just derived. We have an expression for the losses in terms of rho g and the velocities up and down stream. Doing some tidying up and rearranging, we find that the losses equal the difference in the velocity squared divided by 2g. This can also be written in terms of u1 only by again applying continuity, which tells us that u1a1 equals u2a2. Looking at this, it is interesting to note that the losses at a sudden expansion are not a function of pressure. In the case of a sudden contraction, energy losses occur only due to the enlargement between the vena contractor and cross-section 2, as shown in the figure here. These take the same form as the losses in a sudden expansion, so we have losses equal uc minus u2 squared divided by 2g. We know from continuity that Q equals UC AC, and that that also equals U2 A2. And that gives us an expression for UC in terms of U2 and the areas A2 and AC. The coefficient of contraction, CC, is defined as the ratio of AC to A2. So we can write UC in terms of U2 and the coefficient of contraction. This means that we can write the equation for the losses in the following form. We can see from this equation that the losses at a sudden contraction of a pipe are a function of velocity in the smaller pipe and the coefficient of contraction only.